Hello and welcome to the Negev Desert. Nowadays when we talk about the Negev Desert, we usually mean everything from Be'er Sheba down to Eilat. But in biblical times, Midbar and Negev specifically referred to the northern section between the cities of Be'er Sheba, Dimona, Arad, and further south were other deserts with different names like Midbar Qadesh, Midbar Sin, Midbar Paran, etc. Now, in biblical times, Midbar and Negev was home to two different groups of people. We had the nation of Amalek, but also the tribe of Shimon. Now let's do a little profile on Amalek based on evidence we have from the Tanakh. The grandfather of Amalek was Isav, who lived in Har Seir, that's in southern Jordan. But the grandson and his uh, offspring, as a nation, they settled here in the Negev Desert. But there's not that much rainfall, not that much water. But there is some vegetation, and if you dig deep enough, you can dig wells. So while it's not a great place for farming, it's a place where you can be a shepherd, have herds, have camels. And that's how Amalek lived, based on the evidence that we have. But of course, they also had a dark side. So they took advantage of their knowledge of the desert to attack unsuspecting travelers. They preyed on the weak and the vulnerable. We see in the book of Samuel that they even kidnapped people and forced them into slavery. And in this quest to rob and kidnap, they even roamed beyond uh, the Negev Desert. So we see them, for example, way down in Rafidim in the Sinai Desert, where they attacked Israel after the Exodus. And we find them in the book of Judges, way up north in the Jezreel Valley, where they joined with our enemies, hoping to defeat us and take advantage of the spoils of war to steal and kidnap all the stuff that they love doing. Now, I think that this is the reason why it was so hard for Israel to destroy Amalek. We read in the Haftarah of Shabbat Zachor, the story of the King Saul. Shaul HaMelech goes on a mission to wipe out Amalek, and he comes down here to the Negev Desert, and we see that he kills everyone, um, except for the king Agag, but then the prophet Samuel, Shemuel kills Agag, so that should be the end of it. But we see a few chapters later, all of a sudden, Amalek's popping up again. We see that they are back to their old ways, and David has to wage a battle against them. So what's going on? It seems like they had other people, roving bands of marauders elsewhere, that kept the name of the nation alive. And the nation of Amalek wasn't destroyed. But it finally came to an end, several generations later, in the days of King Hezekiah, and the people who finally destroyed Amalek was none other than the sons of Shimon. Now let's do a little profile on Shimon and see what they've been up to this whole time. So let's start with the father of the tribe. Shimon is the second son of Leah, and she says when he's born, Ki shama Adonai ki sinua anochi. Shimo Shimon. God heard that I am hated. And this sort of foreshadows the experience of the tribe of Shimon. Because later on, after the Exodus, there's a census, and Shimon is the third most populous tribe. But 40 years later, they are counted again, and they are in last place out of all 12 tribes. Over 50% of the population had died in 40 years of the desert. And it's because of plagues, and it's because the leader of the tribe of Shimon, Zimri, led the sin with the daughters of Midian. So they bore that punishment. And we see it reflected again when uh, Moses blesses all of Israel at the end of his life, in Vizot Beracha. But the only tribe that's not blessed is Shimon. Skip ahead to the days of Joshua. They come to the land of Canaan, and Shimon is given none other than the Negev Desert to live in, putting them on the front lines with Amalek. And of course, Shimon, we see in, in the book of the Rayamim, they also become shepherds. That's the way to live down here. But they never confront Amalek. We see throughout the book of uh, Joshua, Judges, Samuel, Kings, it's always someone else that's waging the wars against Amalek. It was uh, Yehoshua, it was Gid'on, Shaul, David. But they couldn't get rid of Amalek. And that finally ended, like I said, in the days of Hezekiah when it was the sons of Shimon who destroyed Amalek. And we read about that story in Deberei Amim chapter 4, verses 42-43. And it says, Umehem min b'nei Shimon halachu lahar se'ir. They went to Har Se'ir, and they found Amalek there. That was where, of course, Esav's home was. But we know Amalek traveled about. Vayakuet she'erit ha'peleta la Amalek. And they wiped out the last vestige of Amalek, a force of 500 men from Shimon. 
So we see them sort of beating Amalek at their own game. They were also shepherds, they also traveled about. And the redemption of getting rid of Amalek once and for all as a nation came at the hands of perhaps the least likely of heroes. Now in Megillat Esther, Haman is never described as being from the nation of Amalek. He's only described as descendant of Agag, who was of course the king of Amalek. And I think it's telling, I think it reveals that at that point in history, Amalek no longer existed as a nation. Sure, there were individuals who were descendants from them, and perhaps Amalek still existed as an ideology or a concept, but the war on Amalek already entered a second phase. Amalek as a nation had already been destroyed thanks to the efforts of Shimon, and I think that it's a great story of redemption, that even a tribe that perhaps was always the downtrodden, the Misken, the Hazit case, can become the savior to the rest of the nation. Thanks for watching and Shabbat Shalom.